In today's video, we're going to try to make a map gas cannon that launches a vortex ring. Before we start today's video, we wanted to remind you that pre-orders for Grant's book are now live. Guys, this is a book that Grant was working on nearly two years ago, and it is available now. One of the cool projects in this book is the Smoke Ring Shooter, and what we're doing today is sort of a scaled up version that's based on this project. There are 52 projects in this book, so that would give you something cool to do every weekend for a whole year. Guys, we really want to get this on the bestsellers list, and the best way to do that is for you to pre-order, other than just the books that I pre-ordered. For those of you who do pre-order the book, if you email a copy of your receipt to 52randomprojects at gmail.com, you will be entered into a drawing to win a free t-shirt. So to help us achieve that goal, guys, go down to the description below and pre-order today. That one was mine. Nate. Yeah. You have a lot of stuff here. Uh-huh. Some time ago, I saw a video by Nighthawk and Light. I think he actually had propane, but it works just as well with map gas. The idea is that this whole setup on top of this canister is designed to perfectly combine the flammable gas in this tank with air just coming in the sides here. When you start to click this, it feeds gas up through that tiny little nozzle into this pipe. Gas and the air that surrounds it. Yeah, us. the gas is injected and as it's moving, it pulls air in and it's all been built and designed to give just the right amount so that it burns quite nicely. Here's the basic idea. After seeing map gas cannons made by other people, we wanted to try to make one ourselves and then to see if we could use the energy it makes to launch a vortex ring. We've made vortex launchers before, but never one fired by combustion. In Nighthawk and Light's video, he showed that you can take three quarter inch inner diameter tube and it fits pretty much perfectly over the nozzle. Now what's fun about this is that when you pull the trigger partway and it starts throwing gas, it starts feeding the tube. The idea is that holding this down, this tube will start to fill with gas. The igniter that's in the top of this, it's a piezoelectric igniter powered by me squeezing and it should ignite, but it's not all going to ignite at once. It ignites as it travels through the tube. So let's give it a shot. We do have a lot of lights on. We'll see how well it's visible. Blow through it. Weird amounts of pressure. It's, it's Wait, not- Wait, did you hear that? I did. It was like an alien. It was like not really. Fired again, just pointing away from your face. But it was like, did you? There you go. Guys, we're playing with fire, but this sound is like. All right, we've. Hang on, I'm gonna stop freaking out for a second. We have discussed the fact that some of the really cool sound effects that you get from Star, Star Wars. Wars. That's what it is. But simply the sound of flicking a metal slinky with a microphone. 1975, I made that. This sounds like a special effect that you would find in a studio. I'm gonna hold this closer to my mic. It does make a strange sound just from the, like the twist, so I'm gonna twist it a little bit more. Let's see if we can get it one more time. To really get the sound, it works better if I disconnect it. It's pretty neat noise. That is awesome. That's cool. This isn't hot, guys, by the time it gets here, it's just kind of warm. More or less, I wanna feel the air pressure. Now the entire studio does currently smell like map gas, just a little. Nighthawk and Light showed us that we can attach a soda bottle to the end, and the soda bottle can act as a chamber where a little bit more gas can build up, and then by drilling a small hole on the other side, we get a much louder reaction. At this point, we've displaced enough air in there that yes, there might be gas. As far as I know, there's, there's no way for it to combust. That worked. <laughs> oh, don't do it like that, guys. So we're just gonna do like this. Oh, are we? Yeah. Nailed it. Rockets are all well and good, but it's not our goal for today. Um, this should prevent that pressure from building up. There we go. The plan is to fire it the same way we have been. Okay. But hopefully with the hole in the end, the, the gas will all flow nicely, and the goal here and hit is. Mark. Well, it shouldn't even hit. It okay. should just make a popping noise. Okay. That's Thanks the goal. For <laughs> a big popping noise. This is basically what Nighthawk and Light built. His was cooler because he wrapped it around stuff and made it look like it his whole sci fi weapon. Out. But my thought was that if it can build up pressure like that, maybe we can use that 
to launch a vortex ring. We've made vortex ring mm -hmm. launchers a few times before. We made before. them in buckets, biggest about Yeah, this bucket size. this size, and then we used a full-size trash can for like the next level, and that was cool too. We still had just like, you hit it on the back. A lot of that design was based off of what Steven Spangler did, but I wanted to combine this project with that project, so ugh, I got a trash can. Not the biggest size of trash can, but a trash can. How many gallons is that? 20 gallon. Go it's only like go $10 too. So, um, so this is the scale we're at now. And spoilers, I've already gone ahead and cut a hole in the top and the bottom. And so now what we need to do is get this hose to connect to this trash can. Basically what we want to do is have the hose go into this container, linked to this container, mm -hmm. and then that sits inside here. So the combustion happens in these two containers, and then the forced air is blown into the big cannon, which hopefully That's what forces shoots everything. out. Yeah. So by the time it's leaving this, just like what you were seeing, I was able to put my hand over this. The combustion has already happened at this point. Once it's hitting here, there's no risk of me burning myself. Same within this. It's not thing. a lot of it. They may still have a little fine. It's fine. There's a small. There's a very small risk. I'm not saying do this, guys. I'm saying I wasn't concerned when Nate was lighting that, that my hand was going to get hurt. Maybe warm, but not really hurt. So in here, combustion is happening in all of these separate chambers. So by the time it leaves, hopefully, fingers crossed, what we have is a vortex ring of air. So that's kind of the goal right now. We've got this cool stepped drill bit, which happens to so drill nice. out to right the right size for the hose. Perfect. Brilliant. Now we want to connect this container to this container, but like this. We're just gonna make a seal box to box. As I slice with my hand that has been sliced and his hand that was tripped to the ER. And as we use razor blades without safety handles. <laughs> yeah, if that were a little, like an inch and a half. No, no, it was perfect. All right, so now this gets taped to this. Oh, never mind. So, still need I keep checking, I keep thinking we're done, but we're not, okay. Well, let's attach a hose to it, yeah. run some gas into it and see what happens. Okay, hit me. <laughs> I mean, that's a dramatic reaction, but that is so cool. Also, I really hit my arm. That really hurt. Uh, I think we do have a strategy All right. for visualizing. Yep. We've got a smoke machine. I've got the cannon pointed at a bunch of cups across the room. You've seen it's not terribly precise when it actually fires. Part of that's just the igniter here. Part of it's how much gas, what's the stoichiometry going on in there. We're just gonna go till it fires and see how it does. Yes! Boom! <laughs> Perfect shot! Obliterated! That was awesome! I think you hit one of the cameras. And the light, you knocked the light over. Yes! Being able to see down the barrel of the whole cannon, like really helps aim, because like you pull the hose out in the back, you can just look and be like, ah, oh, what am I pointed at? There we go. All right. That seemed like a bullseye. All right, let's add some smoke. I like it. <laughs> a very, very oh. slow... Oh no, my poor little ring! I've got you, I've got you. You did so good, little champ. Oh! That was real quick. Oh, that is neat. That had a lot of pressure. Wow! <laughs> that knocked the cannon backwards. Almost. There it is. We All got right, him. little tiny, yep. Huh? Beautiful. Almost. Come on, come on, come on. But we're getting Ooh, the ring. I saw it all yes. the way yep. to here. 
Oh, here it comes. Baby here comes. ring, baby ring, baby ring. And it, it went too high. It traveled high. up. It's still going. It, it like bounced a little bit. Woo. <laughs> that would have taken that cup off if there had been one. That had a small one. Wait. Yeah. Oh, it got me. It got the cups. It was oh, slow. Wait, it look, was small. Kim, look, Mark, Mark, Mark. Look at that weird little doohickey. I love him. I'm going to name him Willow the Wisp. Stand in front of those little things. There we go. Yeah, all nice. right, got it. All right, guys, you've actually seen Nate make smoke vortexes before with like a bucket. We've done them a few times with plungers in the pool. We made sort of a bellows with one to use for fires. Yeah, this But this one uses flames, and so it's way more fun. So it's it's just uh, boom, combustion in there, launches the rings. Some of those went so fast, like we really couldn't track what was happening. They just. <laughs> So thank you to Nighthawk and Light and others on YouTube who have shown how to make these pop cannons. And it's just fun to scale this up to a different use. Guys, that's not all you know. We've always got more for you to see. Click that box up at the top to check out our most recent video and we'll see you in the next one. Talk to you then.